Many thousands of years ago, a couple of ancient enemies made a kind of peace, and that truce has lasted until this day. In fact, it's far more than a truce. It's the greatest friendship in all of nature, and it's all down to men and wolves learning to live and work together. Of course, these friendly wolves are known to us as dogs, and they truly are man's best friend. But what about the breeds of dogs that have been with us since almost the beginning? From the dog that belongs to the mighty Himalayas to China's puffy lion dog, here's the 15 most ancient dog breeds on Earth. <sighs> Number 15. Tibetan Mastiff the Tibetan Mastiff belongs to one of the most ancient and mysterious cultures on the planet. Tibet, obviously, and DNA evidence suggests that the Mastiff-type dog has been a popular companion for the nomadic Tibetan people of the Himalayas for at least 5,000 years. It also shows that prehistoric Tibetans interbred this strong and hardy dog breed with the Tibetan wolf to give it extra cold resistance, increased hemoglobin for living at high altitude, and even more ferocious guard abilities. Tibet has long been a monastic culture, and monasteries need to be peaceful places, so to keep troublemakers and bandits away, guard dogs are necessary and the Tibetan Mastiff has a long history of guarding monasteries. They are even capable of killing the tigers, which live in the region. Worldwide, they are not a common breed of dog due to being a true working dog, and so not really ideal for life as a pet in an urban environment. One benefit of these ancient dogs is that many of their health problems have been resolved over time, and so long life expectancy is a feature of this breed. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Chow Chow Tibet and China are old enemies, and it's a battle that continues to this day as the modern People's Republic of China currently occupies the nation of Tibet. But the story didn't begin there, and the rivalry even extends to their dogs. The Chinese have the Chow Chow, and this breed is also well adapted to China's chilly northern regions. In China, these dogs are known as Song Chi Quan, which translates as puffy lion dog, and one look at its big fluffy head will tell you just why. But don't just let appearances deceive you, Chow Chows are working dogs and make excellent guardians, although they are not a dog for a beginner. These dogs have not only been around for a long time, they've been important parts of Chinese works of art for a long time too. A recently discovered bas relief from the Han Dynasty dating back to around 200 BC clearly shows a Chow Chow. One other distinctive feature of this breed is its blue-black tongue and lips, which is pretty unusual. Maybe this, along with the lion-like appearance, was the reason this dog was chosen by celebrities such as Elvis Presley, Sigmund Freud, Martha Stewart, and President Calvin Coolidge. Number 13. Samoid the Samoid is another ancient dog, which comes from the colder parts of the world, this time the region of Siberia in modern Russia. These dogs were traditionally used for hunting, herding reindeer, and sled pulling by the Siberian people known as the Samoidae, which is also where the name of the breed comes from. The Samoidae probably migrated from Central Asia around 1000 BC and brought their dogs with them, meaning the Samoid dogs are a very ancient breed. Back in the 1800s, the first Samoids arrived in England as gifts to Queen Alexandra, who became a big fan of these dogs, and pretty soon everyone wanted their own Samoid to be just like the Queen. They are known to be intelligent, playful, and loyal, which means that they are great as pets. They are also known for having a thick and lush white coat, which shows off their Arctic origins pretty clearly. <coughs> They also have a naturally smiley face, which is known as the Sammy Smile. Although that smile might turn upside down quickly if you leave them alone too much, as these are very social dogs and are known to get depressed when they are lonely. So make sure you've got plenty of time to play with your new buddy. Number 12. 
Afghan Hound Another mountain dog, the Afghan Hound, can trace its roots back at least 8,000 years, and it has lived alongside the warrior people who have inhabited the mountainous region of what is now Afghanistan ever since. Afghanistan also has desert regions, and this dog is highly adaptable. and able to keep with hunting large game in all kinds of extreme conditions. They are independent dogs, and not thought of as the most affectionate, but they are extremely loyal and devoted. Back in the 1800s, Afghan hounds were imported into England due to the expansion of Britain's colonial empire into the reign of Afghanistan. They became immediately popular, but the British were not the first people to jump on the Afghan hound bandwagon. Alexander the Great was a fan, and this led to a trend in ancient Greece for these dogs. And it is even said that the dogs which were aboard Noah's Ark were a pair of Afghans, which is more a story of just how ancient this breed is considered to be. Afghan hounds are very smart and brave dogs, who specialize in chasing down leopards to keep their masters safe and are able to run at the same speed as a thoroughbred racehorse. Number 11. Chinese Sharpei the Chinese Sharpei is one of the most recognizable dogs due to its wrinkly face, but if those skin folds make this dog look old, then that's partially because it really is an ancient breed. The Sharpei has been in China for thousands of years, and archaeologists have even discovered clay figurines depicting the Sharpei which date back to 206 BC. The name Sharpei translates as sand skin, which is down to the color and texture of the coat, which is short-haired and rough. The main job of the Sharpei is to hunt wild boar, but they also took care of farmers' flocks from predators, as well as protecting the homes of the farmers themselves. Sometimes these dogs were even used in dogfighting contests, but while they are a tough dog, they are not the best for dogfighting, and were eventually replaced by mastiffs. When China fell to the communist overthrow in the 20th century, a wave of oppression against dogs began in the country, and breeders from British Hong Kong worked hard to try and save as many dog breeds as possible from extermination. So many Sharpays were shipped to foreign countries during the 1970s, including Europe and the USA, where they have now become popular and the future of the breed is healthier than ever. Number 10. Alaskan Malamute the Alaskan Malamute is the oldest and the largest Arctic sled dog species and was bred by the Malamute tribe at least 3,000 years ago. Since then, it has become a critical component of survival in some of the harshest living conditions in the world. These dogs are amazingly strong and can pull huge loads on sleds across the icy lands where they live, and they are also extremely good at hunting large game. <gasps> and protecting against other predators like bears and wolves. They love to chase small animals around, but in spite of this and their massive size, they are gentle giants who make great family pets. If you have enough space and are willing to spend more on dog food than you probably do feeding your entire family, the ancestors of these dogs crossed the Bering Strait many thousands of years ago when people first moved from Asia to the Americas. And once the Inuit tribes had settled in the northern lands, they developed this cold weather specialist breed. They are true pack dogs, and so will be happiest when surrounded by others, especially their human pack. Number 9. Saluki the Saluki is a breed which, according to modern DNA evidence, is one of the dog breeds which is most closely related to wolves. These dogs haven't changed all that much since the days when it was still a wild wolf, even if it really doesn't look too much like one. A close relative of the Afghan Hound, this dog has the entry in the Guinness Book of World Records as the oldest recorded dog breed. having been noted down in an Egyptian text dating all the way back to 329 BC. But the breed certainly dates much farther back than that, way before humans figured out the technology of writing. They have long been popular with nomadic tribes due to their speed, strength, and stamina, and they are sight hounds above all else. They love nothing more than chasing small animals and will almost always go for any squirrels, goats, otters, 
foxes, raccoons, snakes, and deer they encounter. In Egypt, they were known as royal dogs and were favored by the nobility, and when Arab invaders arrived, they also adopted the breed, believing it to be a gift from Allah. They call the Saluki El Hor, which means noble one. The Saluki is tougher than it looks, and some breeders have recorded speeds of almost 50 miles per hour. And the Arabs applied henna, or nut oil, to these dogs' feet to harden them, making them even more adept at running on the tough terrain of North Africa. Number 8. Pasenji Another very ancient North African dog breed is the Pasenji, which is said to date back all the way to around 6000 BC due to cave paintings of the breed having been found in Libya. Pasenjis are considered a barkless dog, since they do not bark like most dogs, although this does not mean they are mute, as they are able to communicate with the other usual sounds, such as growls, whimpers, screams, and whines. <coughs> This dog is extremely energetic and needs a ton of exercise or it will become bored and destructive. They love to be outside running around as much as possible. They are another breed that was popular with the ancient Egyptians, but the dogs in fact seem to have originated in sub-Saharan Africa, somewhere between Congo and South Sudan. Their main duties were in hunting missions and were probably gifted to the pharaohs from sub-Saharan African tribal leaders. The Egyptians appreciated them for their cleanliness and cat-like personalities. In Kenya, the dog was also popular with Maasai warriors, who would use a team of four Pisenjis to flush a lion out of a cave so the warriors could then kill it as it was chased out by the dogs. Number 7. Akita Inu the Akita Inu is one of Japan's most iconic dogs, and it is named for the Akita Prefecture. But archaeological discoveries have shown that the Akita's immediate ancestor, the Matagi Inu, went extinct in 200 BC, having existed from at least 8000 BC. These dogs are famous for their loyalty, as well as being affectionate and intelligent companions. They are also great as guard dogs, with a lot of courage and dominant personalities. The breed became famous in the USA when author and disability rights advocate Helen Keller was presented with a pair of Akita Inu in 1937. These were the very first Akitas to enter the US. And nowadays, the American Akita is recognized as being a distinct variation of the breed. Akita is in the northmost part of Japan, and the area is rocky and mountainous, meaning that winters can be cold, so this is a very hardy breed. Like a lot of things in Japanese culture, the Akita symbolizes things health, happiness, and longevity. In fact, there is a tradition in Japan of sending a small statue shaped like an Akita to a friend or relative who is sick as a kind of get well soon gift. Number 6. Siberian Husky the Siberian Husky is one of the most iconic dogs in the world, and pretty much anyone can recognize this amazing breed, when they're not confusing them with a Malamute, that is. Well, these double-coated dogs are some of the most ancient hunting dogs in the Arctic, and they were bred by Siberia's Chuki people a long, a long time ago. They love to work, and this means that any Husky owner will need to provide plenty of tasks and physical exercise for these dogs to blow off all their mental and physical energy. Another skill that all Huskies have is that they are the Houdinis of the dog world. They are amazing escapologists and can make their break from all but the most secure of enclosures. A sled dog, they have incredible resistance to cold and can also survive on minimal amounts of food if they need to. They proved their worth on their first arrival in the US in 1909, when a team of Huskies competed in the All-Alaska Sweepstakes race for sled dogs. The Husky team left all others trailing in their wake and went on to win every race for the next 10 years, becoming famous as the world's greatest sled dogs. Number 5. Canaan this is a dog which comes from a part of the world where civilization first began. The Canaan dog is the dog of the ancient Hebrews used to herd livestock and keep guard of camps back in biblical times. That's pretty ancient. They are fully working dogs, and so can be a challenge in a household with other animals or young children. And they tend to be very protective, so strangers need to beware. 
In the ancient Middle East, dogs had an important role in the birth of civilization, as established communities sought to protect their growing towns with both militias and dogs, which helped to keep bandits and barbarians away so the towns could develop in the safety that there were some excellent dogs on guard. These are versatile dogs, which nowadays can make good companions as well as personal guard dogs for a modern home. They have retained many of the hardy characteristics which once helped them to work in their native desert environment. Number 4. Laza Apso Back in Tibet now once more, and this time, it's the Laza Apso. These dogs were widely used for guarding both monasteries and palaces, and nowadays can make fantastic family pets who can double up as a guard dog for your home. The Laza Apso has been known to exist at least as far back as 800 AD, where the earliest records of the Buddhists refer to the dog, but they are likely much more ancient than that, and some of that ancient Buddhist wisdom seems to have transferred into these dogs, as they are known for their kind, calm nature around young children children, and other pets. They are also a breed of dog which tends to be fine with spending time alone, and they don't develop destructive behaviors if they chill by themselves for a while. Namaste! They are named for the capital of Tibet, Laza, and also the Tibetan word for goat, due to their long, goat-like woolly coats. However, this is the modern name for the breed, and they were originally called Abso Senkai, which means bark lion sentinel dog. Kind of explains all you need to know about it. They are also associated in Tibetan culture with the mythical snow lion, which Tibetans believe is a guardian of their country. Number 3. Zolo Exquintly Now, here's a dog with some of those names that is nice and easy to pronounce. Zolo Exquintly. Alright, Mexican friends, get down in the comments and tell me how I did. The Zolo Itzquintli is native to Central America and is one of the oldest breeds you will find there. Most people who don't happen to speak pre-Columbian Central American languages just call them the Mexican Hairless, or Zolo for short. One of the greatest benefits of this breed for modern people is that they are hypoallergenic, so you won't need to spend all day and night sneezing like crazy if you happen to have dog fur allergies. They are known to be a little highly strung and the epitome of small dog syndrome problems, so better look elsewhere if you have young children or other small pets. They have been depicted in Aztec artworks, which date back 3,500 years, so there is no denying their popularity. In fact, they were considered sacred and believed to have magical powers, so the Aztecs kept them in their homes to ward off bad spirits, and also apparently intruders, although maybe not as efficient as a Doberman, for example. Number 2. Tibetan Terrier If it wasn't obvious already, the Tibetans love their dogs, and they weren't super happy about the Chinese trying to take them away back in the 1970s. Some of the dogs the Tibetans bred were for guarding and protection, and even for battle, but others, like the Tibetan Terrier, was bred mainly for good old companionship. These lap dogs love to be close to their owners, and they also love to play and entertain. <laughs> They have long hair that needs plenty of grooming, and they hate to be alone, usually freaking out and destroying stuff if they don't get enough attention. They were first bred in a place called the Lost Valley, at least 2,000 years ago, and this region became cut off from the rest of the world in the 14th century when an earthquake destroyed the only road in and out. They are considered good luck charms by the Tibetans and are sometimes given as gifts of good fortune. In spite of being a lapdog, they are actually quite strong and agile for their size, and are quite capable of navigating the region's rocky terrain. Number 1. Pekingese the Pekingese were known to be the royal dogs of China, and in fact only royals were allowed to own one for a large part of their history. If you decided to steal one, then you would be facing the death penalty, usually carried out in the slowest and most painful way imaginable. So maybe just settle for a mutt. The Pekingese is a low-energy dog, and will be fine with a little playtime every day, along with occasional walks. These are great apartment dogs and good for first-time dog owners, as they are considered a very easy breed to live with. 
On the other hand, they don't much like children, strangers, or other pets, and are not the brightest sparks of the dog world, making them snooty and difficult to train. Royal dogs, all right. They much prefer cool climates to hot, but will be happiest when sat in the lap of their masters or mistress. Especially if you happen to be the king or queen of somewhere, the fierce side of these dogs was bred in by those Chinese royals. They used to hide Pekingese in their sleeves, so they could leap out and attack like some kind of crazy taxi driver scene with tiny dogs, should anyone get too close to the emperor. Which of these ancient dogs was your favorite? Do you know any dogs that are even more ancient than the ones on our list, let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!